What's up guys, Coding Jesus here, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at actual trading market data. But before I get into the actual trading market data, guys, it's important to understand four key concepts. What the market data platform is and how it sends information, what information you'll be receiving, what an event is, and what a packet is. All right, guys, let's jump right into it. The market data dissemination platform, at least the CME's market data dissemination platform, is called MDP3, Market Data Platform 3. That's the acronym. How will you receive information via MDP3? Well, MDP3 has several channels, just like your TV has several channels. If you want information about treasuries, well, that's one channel. If you want information on natural gas, well, that's another channel. Similarly, if you want to watch sports, well, hey, that's ESPN. If you want to watch news, that's maybe CNN for you, or maybe it's Fox News for you, or maybe it's some other channel for you. So that's how it works. If I want natural gas products, I'm listening on one channel. If I want treasuries products, I'm listening on another channel. Now this is where things get interesting, guys. If I want natural gas futures information, I'm listening to the natural gas channel, but I'm listening on a given port. And that port will be different than the natural gas options information. What does that mean? Well, imagine you are a kid and you went to a park with your friend. Maybe you brought some toys with you. And one of that toy, and one of those toys was potentially that little string that had two tin cans on the end. Think of the string as a channel. On one end, you have the CME screaming all updates about all information to the, into that tin can. On the other end, you have you listening to that tin can for updates. Now, if you want to listen for futures updates, well, you'll need to use the red tin can. If you want to listen to options updates for that same channel, guys, for the exact same product information, for that exact same, let's say, treasuries updates channel, you'll need to use a blue tin can. So you're listening with the green tin can for options. The string is the same, guys. Once again, it's the same channel. It's still treasuries. All the information's treasuries. But if you want to listen for options updates, well, you got to switch to the blue tin can. All right, now that you understand how market data is disseminated, let's talk about the various updates you can receive. There are only a couple of updates, which is quite surprising given how much information's out there. And these are the updates, guys. There is a book update, incremental book update, volume summary, trade summary, quote request, spread definition, security status, daily refresh statistics, and daily refresh session statistics. I believe I covered all of them, maybe there are more, but these are the nine to 10 that I'm familiar with. All right, so now that we understand what different updates we receive, let's actually talk about what an event is because it's critical to understanding how you will receive these updates. All right, guys, the way I like to think of an event is a grouping of various occurrences. Let me give you an example. I'm a trader and I'm aggressing against the order book, meaning I'm selling into the bid. I sell into the bid and that's a match, that's a trade. But that trade also has an accompanying order book update with it. So what I will get from the exchange is two things. I will get a trade summary saying, hey, a trade occurred, and I will get a book update for all instruments affected. In this case, just one instrument affected. All right, so that is two different updates, but they are both one event. They are one event because they are one logical occurrence. This is very important to understand, but let me analogize it differently for you, for those people that might still be confused. Let's say you're going on a tour, and you're going on a boat tour, and you're bringing 19 other friends with you, so there's 20 people in total. You get to the dock, and each boat can only fit 10 people. So you put the first 10 in one boat, and the next 10 in another boat. You send the first boat and then the next boat. How is this similar to the example that I gave you guys? Well, it's actually quite similar. We have one event and this event is synonymous to those 20 people that come to the boat. But this one event cannot fit within one packet, right? It can't fit in one boat. So you need to split it up into two packets or like in the analogy I gave you guys, two boats. So you'll put the first amount of information or the first update on one boat. It might be the trade summary first or the book update first. And then you will put the other update on the second boat. This is the exact same thing that happens in trading market data, guys. You'll have maybe one packet for this event, or maybe if this event is so large because it has so many updates, you might have two, three, or four packets. So you split this event into different packets, but what's key to understand here, guys, is all these packets have the same event time. Yes, they may have different send time because you've sent the boats one after the other, right? So the send time that they've left the port isn't exactly the same, but they will have the same event time. 
All right, guys, now that, you under, now that you've understood what the market data platform is, what the various updates are, what an event time is, and what packets are, let's actually take a look at market data. All right, guys, on my screen, what you can see in front of you is something called Wireshark. Wireshark is an application to display packets. Now, there are various ways to capture packets, but I decided to capture it via a capture tool that saves information into a file format called .pcap. PCAP is very simple, it's dot packet capture. Now there are two forms of PCAP files, dot PCAP and dot PCAP NG. NG stands for new or next generation, all right? Okay, let's take a look at what's actually being displayed here. So every row that we actually have here is a different packet, a different grouping of information. We have the time that our packet capture tool actually captured this packet sent from the exchange. Note guys, this is not event time, it is simply the time that this packet was listened to by us, by me. We have our source IP and our destination IP. This is the source IP of the exchange, and the destination is the destination of the box that was, that was running to capture information sent from the exchange. Let's take a look at the last column. The last column is the port. Like I said, guys, analogizing it back to that park example, I'm listening to either a green can or a blue can. Here, I'm listening to whichever can this port actually belongs to. We have the length of the message in bytes, and we also have the protocol. Traditionally, this protocol would actually say UDP. UDP is a protocol that is simply a fire and forget like protocol. It takes information from the exchange, it shoots it to everybody listening, and it doesn't give a shit whether you actually heard it or not. There's no sort of verification that says, hey, me as a proprietary trading firm, I've heard it. Okay. It doesn't say UDP here, actually, guys. It says MDP3, SBE, whatever. This is a plugin that I downloaded, and I'll put a link in the description box below that actually parses this message. This message is sent in binary format. It's just a bunch of zeros and ones. There's no way for me to be able to read it. So this plugin actually go ahead and breaks down the message for me in a human readable form. And I've actually contributed to, in an open source fashion, this project. All right, guys, let's take a look at a packet. We're gonna take a look at the first packet and we're gonna take a look at it step by step. So as you can see here, guys, CME Futures MDP3 SBE, this packet initially is 142 bytes, but the actual contents of what's important to us is only 100 bytes long. This is a binary packet header. We have message sequence number and sending time. What is message sequence number? Well, guys, remember there was that little tour example that I've given you when people jump on boats and there are various numbers of boats, right? There's the first boat, second boat, third boat, et cetera, et cetera. What this is telling us, guys, is that this packet or this boat is the 34th millionth boat sent from the exchange downstream. Okay, what is the sending time? The sending time is nanoseconds since the beginning of the epoch. What the hell is the epoch? It's January 1st, 1970. Why is it January 1st, 1970? Don't ask me, it just is. All right, but, but why are they sending this weird large number as opposed to some string human readable timestamp? Well, guys, when information is sent, People want to send the most expressive information and use the least amount of space. Sending a string will take a lot of space, right? Sending that like year, 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 month, month, day, day, hour, hour, month, minute, minute, second, second, dot, whatever, string will take up a lot of space. So instead they send you the amount of nanoseconds since the beginning of the epoch, and it's your job on your own client system to then make something out of this number, to convert it into an actual date time. Okay, let's take a look at now the message contents. All right. So we have our message size, we have our message header. Only a couple of things in this message header are actually important. Block length, not important for now. Schema ID, not important for now. Version ID, not important for now. These things can be put into a separate video about the simple binary encoding protocol, but that's beyond the scope of this video. What is important is template ID. The template ID is 46, which corresponds to one of the nine updates that I previously discussed. And one of those updates are the incremental book refresh updates. What the hell is the incremental book refresh update, guys? This update will send you a level two update and a level three update. The level two update will tell you what the current bid or offer that has been affected is, and the level three update will tell you what actually changed to lead to that level two update. Okay, let's take a look at the level two update first, and then we can take a look at the level three update. Before we take a look at the level two update, which is this, and the level three update, which is here, I want to take a look at this match in event indicator. Remember when I talked about events, guys, right? Updates are grouped into events. This is telling us that in this packet, we have one event, right? We have one event. It is the start and the beginning of the event. How do I know that this is the start of the event? Well, because I know from experience that the previous packet also had this end of event indicator. 
So imagine that these boats are being shipped from this port, and on each boat you have a sticker, end of the event, end of the event, end of the event. If two boats both have the end of the event sticker on them, well then you know that the event, there are two events and they are exclusive to each boat. But if there are two boats and only the last one has the end of event sticker, well then you know that the first one has an event time that belongs to the event of the last boat being sent. I know that's a mouthful guys, but I'm trying to explain it in the most intuitive way. Okay, let's take a look at the level three update first that led to the level two update. So this is a level three update. Or, uh, incremental refresh book order groups. All right, so we have group size here, which pretty much tells us how many level three updates we have. We have one level three update, and this is the update. Don't worry about order ID, it's anonymous. Don't worry about priority, that's maybe a topic for another video. Let's look at what actually happens here. So the update that the trader took was a order delete. He deleted his order at that level two price level. And how much quantity was on that order? Well, he had a display quantity of one. So he deleted an order that was lying on the order book that had a quantity of one. Now that led to a level two update. Okay, let's see what the level two update actually is. So we can see here that we have one level two update and this is a level two update. The change was on the bid side and price level one meaning it was on the best bid. So this person deleted an order that was on the best bid. As you can see here, the update action was change meaning that there was no new bid added to the book, there was no bid deleted from the book, rather the best bid changed. What changed? The quantity on that bid changed. Okay, so the entry size is the quantity 18, meaning the current quantity after this person deleted his order is now 18, meaning that previously the quantity on this level was 19. Right guys? We had 19 quantity on this level, a person deleted his order that had one quantity, therefore there is 18 quantity left on this level. The security ID will tell you what security was actually impacted. I know by personal experience that this security is equities, futures, uh, expiring March 2020. So I think it's ESMO or ESM0. And this is the price, guys. This is the actual price level. 3567500. You're probably looking at this and asking, what the hell? What, what price is this? There's no decimal place here. Like I said, guys, the CME wants to send you the most expressive information and use the least amount of space. Sending a decimal number would actually take up more space than sending a long or a number in this format, meaning that you're going to have to actually back out what this human readable format is on your end, on the client system. You'll have to involve price factor, display factor, yada, yada. That's beyond the scope of this video. But from personal experience, guys, I know that this price is 3,567.75. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how market data is disseminated, what updates there are, what an event is, and what various packets are. And if you like this video, guys, click on the bell button and also click subscribe to get the latest and greatest in coding Jesus. I also have a Calendly link in the description box below if you want a one-on-one -on -one consulting session with me, whether that is interview prep, resume review, or you just want to talk to me for whatever reason. I also have a Discord link in the description box below, so make sure to click on that. And guys, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Cheers.